So when you guys open up the metric problems worksheet, you're going to have uh, a couple of different tables. You're going to see one that looks kind of like a staircase, looks like this. You're going to get another one that's just a prefix table that has you know lists of the prefix, the symbol, multiplier, and then the exponential form. So I'm going to show you two different methods for doing metric conversions. The first method that I'm going to show you uh, is going to work. I mean, this would work in theory for any, you know, any metric conversion you wanted to do. However, it gets to be a bit cumbersome when you're dealing with numbers that are larger than uh, a kilo or maybe smaller than a milli. You got to start moving the decimal place a lot of, you know, a, a great, great distance, and that's not exactly the most efficient thing to do when you're dealing with numbers that are way bigger, way small. So. Um, we'll look at this. I'll fill out the chart with you. This kind of shows you at least the workings on how the metric system works or how uh, metric conversions actually work. So what you guys will see here is uh, what they would call a, a, you know, a staircase. It has prefixes listed all the way from kilo down to milli. Um, it shows what their values are, kilo being a thousand, hecto being a hundred, deca being ten. The base unit they don't have labeled, but the base unit is basically a multiplier of one. And then deci centi milli is a tenth, a hundredth, or a thousandth of whatever unit you're talking about. Now, the base unit um, de is dependent on what we're actually measuring. So, if we're measuring mass, then the base unit would be a gram. If we're measuring a volume, like how large something is, it would be the liter. And if you're measuring uh, a distance, like how far something goes, we would use the, the meter. Now, you could have any combination of these prefixes. Uh, a kilogram, a hectogram, a decagram, decigram, centi, and milligram, or a kiloliter, hectoliter, decaliter, and so forth. The prefix is, is basically a multiplier of whatever value you have. Um, there is uh, abbreviations that go with these, which you've seen in the other chart, but they don't show here. This is basically um, what you would use in order to identify you know, what prefix is actually being used. Kilo uses the K, Hecto uses an H, Deca actually uses DA, Deci uses a lowercase d, Centi uses a C, and then Milli uses a lowercase m. So I'll try to help you guys identify which one is which as they're listed in the problems. Sometimes people get a little confused because sometimes they'll see a base unit by itself. For example, a meter and a milli have the same letter, but you, you don't ever have a milli unless you already have a meter or a base unit present. So if you, if you ever see an M or a G or an L, any of those by themselves, it's always talking about the base unit. The only time you're converting to milli or from milli is when you have an M and another M because there's actually a prefix there instead of just a base unit. Okay, so um, I'll go through some of these. Uh, we'll start up pretty easy and I'll show you how to use the staircase. First practice problem is showing we're converting from one centimeter to one millimeter. So the trick is you look at where you start and where you're going to finish. So in this situation, I'm starting at centi and I'm going to milli. And using the staircase method, it's simply gonna show you what direction to move the decimal place. Um, when we move the decimal place to the right, it's the same as multiplying by 10 and for every single step is the same as a multiplier by 10. So when you guys start at centi and you're going to milli, um, I'm going to multiply by 10 or move the decimal place to the right one. I started with 1.0 in essence, it doesn't show 0, .0 but the decimal place is after the one. So if I move the decimal to the right one place, I basically need to add, add a zero and that'll get me to where I need to be. Okay. The next one is going from kilo to the base unit. So we start with 15 kilometers and we're going to go to the base unit uh, of meters. So I start at kilo and if I follow the stairs I would go one, two, three units to the right which is the same as multiplying by a thousand. The other way to look at this is if you started with 15 and had the decimal place here you move it to the right three and you fill in the zeros. Either way you end up with 15,000. When you're converting to base units, uh, you, can almost, you can almost write out the number just based on what the prefix is because when you go from kilo to base, the base has a multiplier of one, and kilo means a thousand. So 
this literally is spelling out saying I have 15,000 meters. And again, since we're converting two meters, we don't have to worry about the numbers being shifted anywhere after that. So it works out well. Uh, the next one is uh, milliliters to liters. So I'm starting out with the prefix of milli. And milli is down here on the staircase. And we're converting it back to liters. So we're going one, two, three to the left. Whenever you move to the left, it is the same as dividing. So we're going to move to the left, divide, 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 which is the same as dividing by a thousand. The decimal place uh, for 400 would be at the end of the two zeros. You'd move it back one, two, and three, which means that your decimal place now would be in front of the four. So you'd be left with 0 0.4 liters. Then we go from milligrams to kilograms. Uh, milli is at the very bottom of the staircase, right here, and kilo is all the way at the top. So as far as this data table, this is as far as you would actually move in any one direction. You would go one, two, three, four, five, six to the left, which remember again to the left is dividing. So the decimal starts in front of the five, so I would have to move it back six places. This means after the decimal place, I have six filler zeros, placeholders, for the kilo. Now remember, a milligram is very small, so you have a half a milligram, like think of like a grain of salt or something really small, and you're wondering what part of a kilogram, which is like 2.2 .2 pounds, so something very large, what part of it do you have? Well, you have a very small part of it. It's even less than what you originally started with. Uh, next one, we're going from the base unit to kilo. So if I scroll back up and take a look at where we're at, we start at the base unit and going to kilo, which is this direction. It's three directions to the left. So it's going to make this value smaller. One, two, three. So by the time I jump back, I have two zeros, a three and a seven and a five. So remember, the decimal was originally between the three and the seven. If I move it back one, two, three spaces, I'm left with 0 .03, or 0 .00375. And then grams to milligrams. Again, we start at the base, and we're going to go to milli. So we're going to go from the base to milli, which is 3 to the right, which is the same as multiplying by 1,000. So this one's going to end up to be 25,000 milligrams. Then we got 14 milliliters, and we're going to go back to liters. Milli is at the bottom of the staircase, and we're going back to the base. One, two, three, looks something like that. To move your decimal from milli back to the base, I started after the four. I'm going to go back one, two, three. So this gives me 0 0.014 liters. Next one, I'm going from meters to milli. So meter is a base unit and milli is to the right. So that's 10, 100, 1,000. I'm going to multiply 0.75 by 1,000. So 10, 100, and then 1,000. would mean the decimal would move to the right three. And then we got kilo to milli. So if you're using the staircase, we start at kg, so the k is kilo, and the m is milli. So following our acronyms, here's kilo, here's milli. How many steps do we go on the staircase here? We got to go all six. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Moving the decimal place to the right, six place values from there. So we had the 2007, plus we got to go to the right six. So you're going to have the 2007 with six zeros after it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And put all the decimal places in. And then the very last one, we're going from liter to milli. Liter being a base unit and milli being to the right. One, two, three place values. So I'm going to go 13. 0.5, if the decimal was here, we went 1, 2, 3 to the right, so 
you can put a comma in there, so 13,500. So that's how you do the staircase method. And again, this would work um, all the way up to larger prefixes or larger values. However, it gets to be a bit cumbersome because the staircase would get really big if we went all the way up or went all the way down to say like nano, like 10 to the negative ninth, or we went all the way up to like Terra uh, or Exo or something like that where the numbers get extremely large. So I'm going to show you a second method. So the second method is going to be using uh, the exponents and subtracting the exponents or dividing out the values and then writing things in scientific notation because Again, some numbers get really, really big or really, really small, which means there's tons of zeros uh, on the decimal or tons of trailing zeros, you know, before, uh, before the decimal, but making the numbers really large. So I think that this way is actually even faster and there's less counting involved in essence. You don't have to kind of move around so much. Um, so here's the, here's the chart. Uh, I'll show you guys a few examples on this and then, of course, you'll have you know, your own problems to try on the worksheet. Um, but the way this chart works is uh, it shows the symbols, it shows the name of the prefix, and then it shows the multiplier over here. Now, remember when I showed you the multipliers in the previous list, we only went up to kilo. So we either multiplied by 10, 100, or 1,000, or on the lower side of the staircase, we only went down to deci, centi, milli. So we were keeping it in a pretty, pretty small range here considering you know, the size of numbers, which really is infinite. But uh, we'll go down a lot smaller, um, go all the way down, pico, femto, atto, uh, all the way up to terra, p to axa, or exa, sorry. Um, and I'll kind of show you how this works. So the method that I found works good is you take a look at where you start and then look at where you're finishing. And I'm always going to list the value of the exponent of where we start and where we finish. So if I start here with 23.45 grams, and I'm trying to convert this to teragrams. I start out at gram, which is a base unit. And the reason I know it's a, it's a base unit, this isn't, a, this isn't a, a Google or anything like that. There's, there's giga and everything else on here. That's capital G, this is lowercase g. If you just have one, if you have just one letter and it's by itself, it's always the base. The base unit has a multiplier of one which means that the multiply, the exponent is zero. 10 to the zero power is the same as one, right? We're not, you're not moving the decimal when you're at the base. The base is just whatever you got. I have 23.45 grams, with gram being the base unit. I'm trying to convert that to teragrams. Well, teragrams, uh, listed up here, you see the capital T, you follow it over, teragram is 10 to the 12th. Okay. Now the reason I'm listing these out is because what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, divide these exponents or when you, when you divide exponents you actually end up subtracting. So if I have 10 to the 0 divided by 10 to the 12th, it's really 10 to the 0 minus 12th. That's what I'm going to, that's what I'm going to end up doing with the actual exponents itself. If I have 0 minus 12, that leaves me with 10 to the negative 12th. Now this is important because this is now my new multiplier for whatever original value that we had. So I am going to rewrite this value like this, 23.45 times 10 to the negative 12th teragrams. This is the right answer, like it's the right, it's the right value. This is how many teragrams you got. If I took this decimal and I moved it to the left 12 places and filled in the zeros, meaning I would have a decimal with 10 zeros, because I go back one, two, and then an additional 10, I have a de decimal place with 10 zeros, two, three, four, five teragrams. That's how many I got if I started with 23.45 grams. Now, this answer is not completely wrong, but when we were writing numbers in scientific notation, there's a rule that says you should have the decimal place between the first and second significant figure. So when you actually go to write your final answer, it should be written as 2.3, and then I'm going to round this, 2.35 times 10 to the what value. Now, if I'm making this value smaller, meaning I'm dividing by 10, that means I need to make this number larger by a factor of 10. 
because I'm not trying to change the value of this. I'm just trying to change how it's represented. That's all we're doing with any of this. We're not creating a new number. You're just representing it in a different way. 23.45 grams is the same as this, which is also going to be the same as 2.35 times 10 to the negative 11th teragrams. I got the negative 11 because I moved this to the left, which is the same as dividing by 10, which means I need to multiply this by 10. Add one to, this is a negative 12, so when I add one to negative 12, it's gonna get me to negative 11. So this is the actual value that I would get for uh, 23.45 grams. I would end up with 2.345, if you want to write it like that, I rounded it. The biggest thing I'm looking for is where is the decimal and what's the exponent value? Looks like that. So I'll do the rest of these also, if you guys want to continue to watch here. All right. The next one, I'm going from gigagrams to kilograms. So I start out with 0 0.00456 gigagrams, and this is going to go to kilograms. So remember the first step, look at the chart, find giga and find kilo. Giga is 10 to the ninth, uh, kilo is 10 to the third. So I'll list them out. I have 10 to the 9th, and here I have 10 to the 3rd. Okay? So in essence, we need to divide the kilos by the, the giga to see where we're gonna, what we're going to end up with. So this is really 10 to the 9th minus 3. 9 minus 3 gives me 10 to the 6th. Bring this value straight down. 0 0.00456 times 10 to the 6th kilograms is what you're going to get. Again, not the wrong number, just written the wrong way. The decimal should be between the first and second significant figure, so it should be between the 4 and the 5. So I'm going to write this as 4.56 times 10 to the... Now I'm making this one larger by a factor of 10, 100, and now 1,000. Moving the decimal to the right three places, making it three larger. That means I need to take this value and make it three smaller. So I'm only at 10 to the sixth, so I gotta subtract three from it, make it 10 to the third. So there it is. 4.56 times 10 to the third kilograms. Next one we're going from milli to pico. So I'll write it out. We got 12,089 milligrams. And this is going to equal how many picograms? Milli is 10 to the negative 3. So we're already starting with the negative value. Pico is 10 to the negative um, 12th. So we're subtracting the second from the first. Here's a prime example where you need to be careful. You'll get that double negative. You're going to have 10 to the negative 3 minus negative 12. So if you minus a negative, that turns into a positive. So this is really, in essence, like negative 3 plus 12, which is going to give me a positive 9. I bring down the value, the 12,089. And this is picograms. Now remember, the decimal right now is here at the end of the 9. We want it in between the 1 and the 2. So I need to move it back 1, 2, 3, 4 places to the left. So the value I'm going to end up with is 1.2. And I'm going to round this to 1.21. 1. Um, you could stretch it all the way out there if you would like, but I'll round it to 1.21. And then we're going to be at times 10 to the. So I'm making this smaller. 1, 2, 3, 4, or 10, 100,000, 10,000. If I'm making this smaller by 10 to the 4th, i got to make this larger by 10 to the 4th. So if I'm already at 10 to the 9th, and I add 4 to that, that's going to give me 10 to the 13th. 
This is going to be 1.2, 1 times 10 to the 13th power. For number four, we're going from micrometers. So here's 34 micrometers, and we're going to meters. So if we take a look, micro is 10 to the negative 6, meters is 10 to the 0, because it's a base unit. So obviously, we don't have a whole lot to do with this one. You're going to have 34 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. The right value is written the inappropriate way. It's supposed to move this back one. So you're going to get 3.4. I make this one smaller. i got to make that one larger. One larger than negative 6 is negative 5. So you're going to get 3.4 times 10 to the negative 5. And then the very last one. We're going from a meter to a nanometer. So we've got 0 0.023 meters. I'm going to convert this to nanometers. So a meter is a base unit. Remember, there's only one letter. It's not, a, it's not a milli, it's just a meter. It would have to have two m's to be milli. So it's a base unit, so that's 10 to the 0. And then we're going to nanometers. There's the n. Nano is 10 to the negative 9. OK? We're going to subtract 10 to the 0 minus 9. Minus negative 9 gives you a positive 9. That is a double negative, right? So there's our times uh, 10 to the 9th, our 0, 2, 3, and this is our nanometers. That would be, again, the right value. However, we want the decimal place between the 2 and the 3. If I make this 10 and 100 times larger, because I'm multiplying or moving the decimal to the right, bigger, bigger, make this smaller, smaller. So you got to subtract 2 from this if I move that 2 to the right, because I make this number bigger by 2 tens. i got to make this smaller by 2 tens. So that's going to be 10 to the 7th. So 2.3 times 10 to the 7th nanometers. All right, so there's your example problems for uh, metric conversions. There's a lot of resources online for for this also so and you'll see other methods for sure I mean there's a lot of ways to do it sometimes people like to set them up and show what you're canceling all the units that you're canceling um, I do like this one though because you can do the same thing all the time just don't forget your double negatives and follow the process correctly so you guys have a few of those to do on the metric conversions worksheet so think of this as your examples and then the worksheet is your practice and then there will be a quiz also um, which you'll be graded on all right, um, the video that I'm going to have you guys watch, and this is also the same, uh, same assignment, the metric conversions worksheet. Uh, there's a problem on there, or a video, and they want you to answer a question about um, a, an early philosopher named Eratosthenes, who was the first person to predict the circumference of the Earth. So this was approximately 2,000 years ago, and just by having some people walk across the desert, um, counting their paces and um, estimating the distance that it was between one city and another. They had, you know, vertical post in the ground on a summer solstice where if you're at 23 and a half degrees north of the equator, uh, nothing casts a shadow if it's a vertical object because the sun is directly overhead. But there was a city further north that did cast shadows at the same time in the same place. And he thought about this and said, well, that's strange. If the sun's rays are coming parallel to each other, uh, and one city's got shadow and the other doesn't at the same time, then they must not be on a flat plane, they must be on a curved plane, which is in essence how he believed that the Earth was round and then was trying to make a prediction based upon you know, the distance they walked and the angle produced, assuming 360 degrees is a full circle, he knew what percentage of the Earth's circumference it was from the one city to the other. So he said, all right, well, if I can measure if I can measure the, the distance and then I know that you know seven degrees out of 360 is that percentage of it, then I should be able to figure this out. So what I want you guys to do 
uh, in the video it shows how he did it and it shows the results that he got and it shows the results that are accepted today as being the true circumference of the earth. I want you just to calculate the percentage of error that he made um, by doing his prediction. So the way that you calculate percentages of error is you take uh, the theoretical value, which is um, whatever is accepted to be true, like the real answer, uh, minus the experimental. So whatever Eratosthenes got, you're going to subtract that from what we really accept the true circumference to be, and then you divide that by the true value. So I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Um, let's assume that uh, I've been to the doctor's office and they put me on a scale and my weight is, well, instead of doing weight, let's keep it science like, let's say we're doing my mass. Let's say they know 100% that my mass is 80 kilograms. Like they know for a fact that my mass is 80 kilograms. That's the theoretical value and that is the right value. If somebody did an experiment and they put me on a scale or put me in an inertia balance or did something crazy to try to figure out my mass and they came up with 80, that means they're 100% right. They had nothing wrong. They would put 80 kilograms here and they would say, all right, 80 minus 80, well, that's going to give you zero. Divided by 80 is still going to be zero. Like they were not wrong at all. They were 100% right. Now, if they were off by a little bit, say for example that they guessed my weight to be 78 kilograms well <clears throat> you can see between here and here 78 kilograms means that they were off by two so they weren't off by much but they're off by a little they were off by two if they wanted to find the percentage of error <clears throat> you would do 80 minus 78 which would give me two two divided by 80 is the same as two ths which is the same as one fortieth which is the same as like a fourth with the decimal place moved over. So a fourth is 0 0.25, so this is 0 0.025. Uh, as a decimal when you're done, this is the decimal representation of the percentage, so you multiply whatever that is by 100. So I'd bump that over 2, which would give me 2.5%. Okay? You guys are going to do the same thing with the, with the data that you get in the Eratophanes video. So they're going to give you an accepted value for the Earth's circumference, which is going to be more like theoretical. So that may be, you know, I'll just, I'll just make up a value. You'll have to watch the video to see. But let's just say the accepted value of the Earth's circumference is, you know, 50,500 kilometers. The theoretical value then is 50,500 kilometers. That's the real value. If Eratosthenes predicted that the Earth's circumference was 50,000 kilometers, you know, if this was the case, if you do that minus that, you know that he was off by 500. Like 500 was his amount that he was off out of how much. That's the part, this is the whole. The part was 500, the whole was 50,500. What percentage is that? You divide the part by the whole gives you the decimal representation. If you multiply it by 100, then that will give you the percentage of error. So try to use that. Um, that's an example. Again, if you guys seek out uh, other resources for this, that's perfectly fine. Um, but that's what I got for you guys today. So if you have questions, uh, send me an email. Uh, you can feel free if you need me to do more explanation. Uh, I can try to find you other sites. Um, there probably will be more. Uh, links or ideas or maybe I'll throw a couple of other videos on doing metric conversions uh, using some different methods too. Uh, if you may, I mean some of you maybe have been taught different ways which is perfectly fine also. So with that though have a good week and we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you.